Hello and welcome to American Truth Project's report. I am Barry Nussbaum with a very special guest. I'm thrilled to be able to announce we have Dinesh D'Souza today. He's an author, he's a filmmaker, he's a provocateur. We're gonna talk about the themes from his best-selling book, The United States of Socialism, and the movie that came from it based on those theories and principles. Trump card, which Dinesh, I've got to tell you, is one of the most brilliant analyses I have ever watched. I wish it was in college campuses from coast to coast. I really appreciate it. Uh, I try very hard to make these movies uh, educational, but also highly entertaining, uh, inspiring, moving. And so I hope it met those uh, standards. I, I got news for you. It's got my stamp of approval all over it. I would pay to have it distributed. It's so important, especially considering how dumbed down most universities are now when it comes to understanding the principles of what made America great. Yeah, I think uh, not only um, is the affirmation of American principles important, uh, the sort of architecture of uh, our system, what makes it unique? Why, why, why is there so much social mobility in America? Uh, how is it the case that someone like me could come to this country as an immigrant with $500 in my pocket and, and realize the American dream, uh, not just of bettering your life, but being the architect of your own life? Um, and then, of course, the, um, the dismaying rise of socialism, uh, the most, I think, the most discredited idea, perhaps, in slavery. Uh, so how such a, an idea that's been tried more than 25 times failed everywhere could possibly make a comeback uh, here in America, come into the political mainstream. Uh, this is sort of the, the mystery that the film seeks to unravel. I got news for you. You raise so many questions that are so brilliant in their simplicity. You would think after watching, at least this is what's ringing in my head because I watched it again today before we came on air. There are no answers to justify other than evil. So let's, let's get started with Trump card. Um, the press is full of calling anybody that thinks there might have been a fraudulent election basically cuckoo, that there was no fraud, that the charges are insane, the media won't even cover it. Um, what do you think is the backbone of the massive denial for even reporting that there could be voter irregularities? Well, I would say that basically we have um, lost the concept of a real independent media in this country because um, in the past we had a media that might incline to the left, but it nevertheless was driven by at least an ideal of fairness or impartiality. Uh, and that is now seemingly gone. Institutions like the New York Times that at least would pretend to or, or, or sort of try to hold themselves to a standard of being fair, looking at both sides, evaluating evidence. So right now that you have a media that seems to be, it's like working with paid operatives for the other side. Um, and you could no more convince them than a, the Coca-Cola company could convince people who work for Pepsi that they've got a better drink on their hands. So what happens now is that they say, well, where, where is the evidence of fraud? And if you say, well, here are 300 affidavits, here are 500 dead people who voted, here's the way in which voting machines could be manipulated, here are the, here's the way in which uh, the, the election laws are flagrantly violated, uh, they act as if, well, as we were, you know, where's the evidence? Well, we just told you, um, and, and the, that if true, if, unless all these people are lying, and you notice that there's a chilling similarity in what the um, what people are testifying to in all these swing states. If you listen to the hearings in Michigan, in Pennsylvania, in Arizona, it looks like it's the same shenanigans. So that suggests to me that there's some coordination, almost as if you have a rash of bank robberies in 12 different states and they all, they all operate in the same way using the same sort of modus operandi. You think, well, there's some criminal syndicate that is putting this together. It's just not independent people trying to pull off heists in 12 different places. So I think something very big is going on here. And the only question to me is whether this can be cracked and cracked in time. Well, before we get to that, it would seem to me, and I've watched probably as many hours as you have, Dinesh, and you're right. It, 
it almost seems like Georgia, Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Nevada, it's the same script in a different place, maybe different numbers, but it's the same bad stuff. Why then are the Democrats themselves, if they truly believe there was no fraud, why are they so committed to preventing any kind of hearings and they just want to get on with it? Is it because they want Biden as president and Trump out no matter what? The truth no longer matters? There was a very interesting tidbit uh, just today or yesterday from Rasmussen polls showing that 30% of Democrats believe that there is fraud, uh, significant fraud, and fraud in favor of the Democrats against Trump. Now, part of this to me is um, a revelation of how little the media um, seems to matter anymore, because the media has been trying, as you say, relentlessly to say this is the most secure election of all time and so on. The same people, by the way, who said that the Russians by buying Facebook ads sort of manipulated and controlled the last election. Now, suddenly we've got now an unbelievably secure process, but nevertheless, they can't even convince their own side. Even the Democrats kind of know that this, that there were uh, clearly significant shenanigans. And I noticed that even some of the rhetoric has shifted from the fact that there's supposedly no fraud to now there's no widespread fraud. In other words, there is fraud. We kind of all know it's on the Democratic side. Interestingly, there's no questions about fraud on the Republican side. That appears not even to be attempted. Um, but the argument is that there's not enough fraud uh, for us to uh, question the result or the outcome. So uh, I think here the question is whether Republicans can effectively deploy either a Supreme Court strategy or a strategy of persuading the state legislatures, which in these swing states happen to be Republican. Well, you raise an interesting point. And there's a, a minority, but it's a healthy minority, as you said, Dinesh, of Democrats that believe the election has monkey business going on. And there's half a dozen polls out on the GOP side between 50 and 80 percent of Republicans believe the election was stolen. So what would you advise Trump supporters at this point to do? Some are saying, well, we should just get on with it and we'll support Trump in 2024 and we'll work really hard to keep the Senate. And other ones are saying, we're gonna dig in and this is a line that we will not allow to be crossed. And as far as we're concerned, we're gonna fight tooth and nail to the Supreme Court. What's the Dinesh D'Souza advice to those Republicans? I do think that uh, the Trump team should pursue all legal means. And what that means is that they should uh, appeal all these cases up to the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court can do kind of one of two things, I think. One is to say, look, it's our job as the sort of referees of the process to make sure that there is such a thing as a legal vote and only legal votes count. And this is how we're gonna make sure that happens. That's one way to go. The other way is to say, look, there's a problem here, but this is a problem that the constitution says must be fixed through the state legislatures. In other words, it is a problem, but it's not our problem. We direct the state legislatures to fix it. Um, and uh, that would then uh, uh, imply a legislative remedy. Now, I don't know if a legislative remedy can be applied in this case. There's really no reason it can't. The Constitution very clearly gives the state legislatures, Article 2, Section 1, that explicit authority. And while the state, state legislatures can delegate it, they can say, well, this is our system for generating electors, they have every right to take that system back and say, no, we want it this time. We have enough doubts about the election. We're going to do it this way. So none of this is illegal, unlawful. You know, the media is like, oh, we're trying to overturn the result of the election. No, Trump's not trying to overturn the result of the election. He's trying to prove that he won the election. Oh, <laughs> profoundly different premise. So what do you make of the rift? Um, a week ago, Sidney Powell was uh, on stage with Giuliani and everybody else in the Trump's legal team opening salvo. Uh, press conference, and now Sydney and, and uh, Lynn Wood have gone their own way and on a parallel track. Um, their theory is massive campaign fraud on a international conspiracy level revolving around Dominion's machines and the software company that supported it. And the Trump lawyers are uh, more traditional 
in their uh, examination of why elections, sh the elections should be overturned or redone or decertified or turned over to the states or turned over to the Congress. Um, are those two tracks incompatible? I don't think they are, but they, they can be because um, the incompatibility comes when you start making suggestions um, to the effect that if they don't, if the Georgia governor does not act immediately and call a special session of the legislature, uh, and if the two candidates, um, um, namely Loeffler and Purdue, don't demand that he do it and make him do it, then, then conservatives and Trumpsters and Republicans should penalize the GOP uh, by not voting uh, in the runoffs um, in Georgia. Now, this to me is uh, terrible advice, uh, actually political suicide. Why? Because if Trump wins, he needs a Republican Senate. And quite frankly, if Trump loses, we need a Republican Senate. So either way, the conclusion for me is we need a Republican Senate. Here's my most important question I can ask an expert like you. Is Trump going to be successful to stay in office because of the fact that there's millions of votes that shouldn't be there and X millions of votes that should have been there that aren't yet shown? You know, I wish I knew the answer to that, but it involves uh, a legal pathway that I'm not uh, privy to. Uh, and it also involves the question of the backbone of these Republican state legislators, which remains to be determined. Uh, a lot of Republicans at the local level get intimidated by the media and by the left. So even if they feel like this is the right thing to do, it remains an open question, will they actually do it? Uh, I continue to be convinced that Trump not only won the election, but won it decisively. It's, re it's really odd in a presidential year for the Republicans to pick up what may end up being somewhere between 12 and 14 seats in the House, uh, hold their Senate majority, and lose the presidency with an incumbent being defeated uh, with a record like Trump's. This is almost unheard of. And Trump also increased his margin by something like 10 million votes since the last time. So the idea that Biden went even over Obama, you got 80 million votes, this ridiculous individual who, can, who barely knows what day it is. I mean, this really defies not just common sense, but any kind of rational computation. I agree with you 100%. And we're both going to know in the next month whether or not truth will prevail. Dinesh, thank you so much for joining us today on ATP Report. Please tell our viewers where they can find um, the United States of Socialism, where they can find Trump Card, and how can they follow you? You can follow me by going to my website, which is just DineshD'Souza.com. Uh, the movie Trump Card is playing on a whole bunch of platforms from Apple iTunes to Google to Amazon Prime. It's kind of fun to watch it on your big screen TV because I made it for the big screen, but you can really watch it on any device. TrumpCardTheMovie.com. That's the website. And I can't give it a higher rating than everybody should go watch it and don't rent it, buy it. It's scholarly, but you did a terrific job making it simple so that everybody can walk away with going, oh, I get it. Socialism really does suck. Now I know why. So very well done, Dinesh. It was, it's a masterstroke, truly. I appreciate it. Thank you. And for our viewers that haven't yet subscribed to our text message alert system, please take out your cell phone, text the word TRUTH, send it to 88202 and push send. You'll be automatically subscribed to our free text message alert system. You'll get all of our shows like the brilliant Dinesh D'Souza on your cell phone in the palm of your hand, always for free, because we don't charge for content. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Nussbaum.